comment on one of my videos recently asking why I haven't done a video about Mont Blanc. And the reason for that is I didn't have a Mont Blanc before. I always thought that perhaps the Mont Blanc was a bit overrated, maybe a bit too snooty, so to speak, but apparently, you know, a Mont Blanc pen is like the grail pen of a lot of people. And I don't, I mean, I guess the reason for that is, you know, they've had a long history. Um, and I don't believe I've ever heard anything bad about Mont Blanc or their, their quality control or anything like that. So I started looking around at Mont Blanc pens online. Of course, my first instinct was to go check out Drum Goals in Houston on their website because they're, I know that they are an official Mont Blanc pen carrier or retailer. So I started looking around and I did find a Mont Blanc. In fact, it's in this box right here. And it is a Mont Blanc Le Grand Meesterstruck. I don't speak German, Meesterstruck 146. It is not the 149. Um, and it's black with platinum trim. Anyway, I found this and I was like, okay, cause I, I didn't want to buy one brand new. To be honest with you, I just, a, a brand that I wasn't sure about I just didn't want to spend the money, to be honest with you. So, so the pre-owned route was the best way for me to go. And so what I found was a pretty much a pen, which I believe, here's the inside of the box. It looks like it's from about the, I'm going to say the 1990s, probably about the mid to late 1990s, from what I could tell from the packaging. Any experts out there could surely let me know. I would appreciate it. So we take this out. I I figured, okay, you know, the guy made sense to me. I was like, you know, that is that is a pen. Mont Blanc is a pen that I haven't looked at yet. And that perhaps maybe it would help to check it out, review it, you know, and see how it goes. I, I was originally looking for a 149, but you know, I then I thought about it. And I'm gonna show that, I mean, I know it's a Jin Hao. <laughs> it's a Jin Hao. Nothing wrong with them. I've got a couple. And from what I understood that the Jin Hao, this version, what is this? The Jin Hao 159. So the Jin Hao 159 is supposed to be a knockoff of the Mont Blanc 149. And, you know, I like the pen. I like, uh, you know, the size of this to me has always been, I've always felt that this pen was just too big. It's too much pen for me. And I needed something just a little bit smaller. And so I, I kind of, after I saw the 146 at Drum Goals, I did a little research and I was like, okay, well, this sounds and it looks like this would be a more appropriate size for me. So next to each other, here's the Jin Hao knockoff next to the 146. And so I don't know if the 149 is as fat as this pen. So I'd have to do like a comparison, which, you know, I don't have a 149 to do that with, so whatever. But the 146, in my opinion, I was like, okay, that size seems good to me. And as soon as I got the 146, I started to compare it next to other pens just to check the size. So here it is next to a Pelican M800, which the sizes are pretty, pretty close. And then next to a Twisby Eco, so these are pens that I find to be very comfortable, although with the Pelican, I'm more of an M600 type of gal. So here it is next to a Twisby Eco, next to a Pilot Custom 823, which is a size that I really like. And so I find the sizes between the 146 and the Pilot Custom to be very, very close. So, and this is, I find this pen to be extremely comfortable. And then finally, uh, next to another favorite pen of mine, next to the Visconti Divina. And the, this, the Divina is a little bit on the bigger side, but in my opinion, for a pen that is a great everyday writer, this size, in my opinion, is the best for me. So that's what I went with. Let's take a closer look at the 146. So this, this pen comes with a gold trim and this is the platinum trim. And of course, at the finial on the cap you have the what is it the uh the the famous snow cap or white star uh which is like their famous logo so there's that the clip is eh, 
It's a little stiff, but you know, I don't really clip my pens too much, so whatever. Around the band here, we've got three silver bands, two thin ones, and right, the thicker band in between, it is, says Mont Blanc and then Meester Struck. I know I'm totally butchering that word, but hey man, whatever. I don't, like I said, I don't speak German, so. Now this pen is a piston filler. You can see that there's a little ink window right there, right below the grip section. Here's the nib. And it is a 14 karat gold, yellow gold and white gold nib which I, I find it, I mean, I don't think it's very austere, but you know, it's a nice looking nib, I think. The, the, real, the real thing that I'm gonna look at is how that nib writes. So, and that's what I'm looking at here is the nib experience, because if it doesn't write good, then it's not worth it. But if it writes good, then it's totally worth it, right? That's the make or break moment. So it does have a piston filling system I do like the ink window. I think it's cool that it's like these lines. And so that way you can see what your ink levels are at. The pen does post. So yeah, for me, this is totally a very comfortable, nice pen. And then without the cap posted, again, another great, you know, just, it actually feels pretty good and the, Threading right here for the cap doesn't bother me at all. It actually doesn't, I mean, I hardly feel it there. So, and we all know that the cap, the pen is made out of black, precious resin. It's so precious. So I think that's funny. It's like, call it, it's like, basically it's like fancy plastic. <laughs> precious plastic. Can that be a thing? What I do like about the Mont Blanc is I do like its classic appeal. And that being said, this pen, which I'm pretty sure it's from around the mid nineties, it still looks pretty good for being 2021. So it's not quite 30 years old, it's pretty close, but you know, whoever had this pen before me took very good care of it because there really isn't like hardly any scratches on uh, any of the appointments or the, the plastic, oh, I'm sorry, the precious resin. So there's another look at that. So we'll go ahead and look at all that. Another cool thing about Mont Blanc, and I haven't played around with looking up the serial number yet, but right here next to the cap, there is a specific serial number for this pen and it probably gives more insight to what year this pen was created and as well as the model, etc. So I guess possibly the only change that might have taken place between now and back in the mid nineties is maybe their nib might have changed, but I didn't go look anything up for that. Cause I mean, it's simply aesthetics to be honest. And Again, I've got to stress this point. It's all about the writing experience. It's not for me about completely about looks. Although, I mean, I do like a pretty pen. That's true. Uh, but for me, this is about something that is functional and classic. I do like classic stuff. So, well, I guess the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this pen up with this new ink, courtesy of Drongles. Thank you so much, guys, for sending this over to me. And it's the new ink around the world in 80 days blue which also has a good looking pen that came out with this set but i am more than happy to try out this ink and see how it goes i mean it only makes sense right to put a nice mom blanc ink into a nice mom blanc pen you know why not i like it when it's all matchy matchy <laughs>
appears that I now understand the hype. That nib wrote like butter, like writing on a smooth piece of glass. That was insane. It was. Okay. So I'm happy. I'm very happy with this pen. I really am. And you know, if you're looking for any type of uh, Mont Blanc or any type of pre-owned pens, I highly encourage you to check out drongles.com. Drongles is based in Houston, Texas, and Larry and Michael, they run the shop and they're actually, they're just, they're so nice. And the, t the service has always been top notch. I mean, I ordered this pen and I got it at lightning speed. It can be purchased pretty much at any authorized retailer. I've seen it at not only Drum Ghouls, but a Pen Boutique also carries Mont Blanc. You can also go to the Mont Blanc website. And the this pen is still being produced today, the Le Grand 146. And the retail price for this pen at the Mont Blanc website is $720 and uh, plus tax too, I think, if they add tax to that or not, I'm sure they do, uh, $720 for this pen. I personally, I got it uh, pre-owned and it was under 500, so, and that's all I'm gonna say about that because it's none of your damn business. No, but I, I think I got a pretty decent deal. And uh, you know, there's another uh, store that sells them pre-owned and it's, I don't know if I'm saying the word, uh, saying their name correctly. It's like Trump, Trump, Fi, Trump, Fi, Trump, Fi, Trump, Fi, Trump, Fi. Yeah, they carry them and they're priced about the same that Drongles had a price, but um, yeah, I guess that's really all I have to say about it. I mean, it's, you know, I'm pleased, I'm happy with it and um, I'll be sure to post some more images of it on my Instagram account. But thanks uh, a lot for joining me for this look at the Mont Blanc Le Grand 146. And that's how the ink flows.